This is CES 2025. There are a lot of great technologies, great developments, and we are at the Coido North American Lighting booth with Shivas, an expert on these type of applications. How are you, Shivas? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you doing, Gary? I'm doing great. I'm very excited uh, to know what you have here. Could you please, please explain to us? Uh, well, at CS 2025, we are showcasing uh, the potential in the driving, especially in the mobility and advanced, uh, I would say, lighting. So uh, we have both lighting and sensing uh, technology displayed here. One of the important features that we are display, uh, displaying here is the adaptive driving beam. So uh, you might have seen during the nighttime when we drive cars, so you don't have low beams going that far enough to light up the roads to see the pedestrians who are crossing the roads or who are on the roadside. As you see here on this, this is a demo for the adaptive driving beam. It has 11 segments. So brief about adaptive driving beam is like, uh, it's a high beam, a smart high beam control system which controls the high beam segments so that it can kind of cut off the each LED at particular time based on the camera system that detects the object or an oncoming traffic. So it kind of switches off that uh, light that goes as a uh, glare to the oncoming traffic. At the same time, it makes sure that the oncoming traffic can see the pedestrians crossing the road. What we see here is an experience of an oncoming traffic driver. So you have to assume that you are sitting in this car, in this small car, and the car coming from the front does not have an adaptive driving beam. So as you can see, the glare right goes into your eyes and you're not able to see the roads clearly. Say, if a pedestrian is walking down the road, you won't be able to recognize and that can lead a fatal accident. So with the adaptive driving beam, you can see now the brightness has gone down, but at the same time, the road is still illuminated. So what it means that it's only shading the small area of the high beam, yet maintaining a good visibility on the road. So as the car moves dynamically, so the camera system is following that car and shading that area. So the headlamps are communicated through the camera system, which detects the position of the car and switches off or shades off that LED, still enabling a good visibility on the oncoming traffic. Let's go back again. If it's not ADB, that's why we are wearing these glasses. So as you see, there's a tremendous amount of glare, right? right. So we don't see anything. So that's why we have this technology which is going to be in the market for US next year and we definitely have to explore more materials which can make this technology robust and have longevity for this kind of a technology to be adapted for the headlights. Sure. Talking about materials, what will be the importance of having the right materials for the right application? Oh, that's a very good question and I think um, coming again um, to this high definition ADB or uh, ADB, so obviously you have seen in last five, 10 years, the brightness on the headlights has gone up. So uh, we were uh, maybe around say 1000 Kelvin temperature or 2000 Kelvin temperature. Now we are talking about a daylight Kelvin temperature, which is around 5000 Kelvin temperature. What it means that there's more light on the source, right? Which, which means there's high potential that it can cause damage to the plastic materials because the thermal is gonna be high and then uh, the radiations are gonna be high. So we work with our partners always, with our resin partners, and we try to develop a material which is gonna make it better, not only for the lighting, but also for any kind of an abrasion or weatherability. So important, uh, material plays a very important role for this modern lighting systems. And if we don't kind of make changes in the materials, we are not gonna adapt this technology for our customers. Of course, that's great. Let's go to the next part. What would you say is the role of engineering plastics like polycarbonate on these type of applications? Oh, that's again a great question. So, uh, plastics and headlights go hand in hand. Right from last 50 years, you have seen the headlamp lenses, which were initially made with glass, have completely gone. So it's not only the transmittivity of the headlamp lens which part, uh, PC meets, but it's also the robustness, the impact strength. And also, uh, besides that, we need to maintain a good transmittivity, as I said. So PC offers a very good transmittivity for the headlight. At the same time, PC offers also a good impact strength. So we always work with our 
partners uh, with our resin makers for developing PC that kind of can adapt to the new technologies like what we are talking here because we don't want to uh, compromise on on the transmittivity of the headlamp lens. So it's very important for us to discuss and decide with our partners to develop a material which can meet the transmittivity requirements for the regulations at the same time have a good impact strength. And even the components which are inside, as you see, these are also made from polycarbonate. So the best lenses, the headlamp lenses, 99.99% headlamp uh, percent of headlamp lenses are made by polycarbonate. So we have to have a good uh, resin supplier who can develop this material for us at the same time guarantee that there's no issue in terms of weatherability or the impact strength. Thanks so much for this huge learning lesson, Shivas. Thank you.